Anonymous asks, how do you reconcile the fact that Nietzsche is often taken to be a precursor to postmodern philosophers such as Foucault? Do the postmodernists misuse Nietzsche? Well, Nietzsche is a precursor to the postmodernists. I mean, he's a precursor to virtually every strand of serious literary, philosophical, and psychological thought since Nietzsche. So for the entirety of the 20th and the 21st centuries. And to say that he, the only way Nietzsche could not influence the postmodernists would be if he wasn't a great philosopher, which he was, or if they didn't know his writings, which they do to some greater or lesser extent. The postmodernists read Nietzsche, I would say, as someone who was essentially triumphal about the death of Christianity and about the rise of the individual human, let's say, as the locus of values. But, but first of all, I don't think that's true. I don't think Nietzsche was triumphant about that at all. I, th I think that he was wise enough to understand the catastrophic price we would pay for the breakdown of our meta-narrative. See, the, the postmodernists disbelieve above all, perhaps, I mean, if you needed one phrase to define them, it is that they don't believe in meta narratives, so overarching stories that, that bring communities together. Now, you know, there's a problem with disbelief in meta narratives because I don't know where you stop. Like, how big does a narrative have to be before it's a meta narrative and therefore no longer worthy of belief? Do you end up not believing in any narrative whatsoever all the way down to the bottom? Which means your entire value hierarchy is destroyed which means technically that you would be unable to act because you act within a narrative framework that posits that one thing is more important than another and therefore worth moving actively toward. So you lose that whole structure and well, you can't lose it, you're, you're done. It's, it's not even technically possible. You might be able to fragment it badly. That happens in schizophrenia you might be able to subvert the positive elements of it or have it subverted as happens in the case of depression. You might lose faith in it as happens with the nihilists, but there's no demolishing your faith in narratives all the way down. So they, they misuse Nietzsche in that manner I, because they take his criticism of his criticism of Christianity and his statement about the death of God to indicate that all narrative has now become invalidated. And they offer nothing as an alternative. Now Nietzsche at least offered the idea that you could create your own values. It's not obvious to me that the postmodernists have incorporated that element of Nietzschean thought. I don't think they misuse Nietzsche. That's the funny thing. It's not based on a misunderstanding of Nietzsche. His pronouncement of the death of God was his conviction that the meta narrative had disintegrated. And then the consequence of that would be disintegration all the way down the structure. And the postmodernists believe that that disintegration, this is maybe, see, it isn't obvious that Nietzsche thought that that was He thought it was inevitable. I don't know if he thought it was right. It's not always obvious reading Nietzsche if he believed that the reason that God had died was, as he put it, because we had killed him. You know, there's a there's a there's an idea of criminality there, that our carelessness. You see the same thing echoed in the old 
Mesopotamian myth of the Enuma Elish, where the younger gods get careless and kill the father upon whom they rest. That's Apsu. And because of that, chaos comes back in the form of Tiamat to destroy all of them. That's the same story Nietzsche told with the death of God. And he does treat the fact that God is dead as a murder that was undertaken by careless human beings and seems to hold us morally responsible for that. And I don't believe the postmodernists are sensitive or I don't believe that they're I can't I can't get the word right. I don't believe they've adopted that element of, of Nietzsche's sorrow, let's say. The postmodern description of the dem demolition of the narrative is triumphalist. It means that the old, and this is where it gets oddly mixed up with Marxism in my estimation, it means that the old power structure, which was by definition tyrannical and oppressive, no longer has any justification. and those who were alienated and isolated by that set of presuppositions can now compete and take their rightful place. And so they replace, it's a funny thing, they replace the overarching narrative with a landscape of warring smaller narratives that are tribal. And they disguise that to some degree by associating them with ethnic and racial and sexual characteristics, right, which seem immutable in some sense and therefore not so obviously tribal. It's a very tricky game. They don't seem to, as they should, extend their skepticism, even if they were avid followers of Nietzsche, to the narratives that make up the notion that there's something coherent and useful and superordinate, let's say, about group identity predicated on race, ethnicity, and sexuality. And so that's not precisely a misuse of, that is a misuse of Nietzsche, I suppose. It's, it's the arbitrary determination of where his prognosis of narrative degeneration would stop. The postmodernists say it stops at ethnic, sexual, and racial identity. And I don't see a justification for that. So there, they're misusing Nietzsche that way. Um, I think the people who used Nietzsche properly were, I think that was Jung particularly, Freud to some degree. But Freud's solution, although useful, was not as deep as Nietzsche, as Jung's. You know, Jung's solution to, to the problem that Nietzsche posed was that we had to go into the abyss to rescue the father who had collapsed and died. And that meant to go to the darkest possible places to find the brightest possible light. And I believe that Jung was correct. I think he, Camille Pellia has said the same thing about Eric Neumann's works, especially two books, one called The um, Origins and History of Consciousness, which is a great book. It's on my list of great books on my website, which you could go take a look at. It's a hard book. It's quite a bit like my book, Maps of Meaning. Like they're really the same book in a funny way. There's three books that are the same that were published in the 20th century. Um, there's Jung's Symbols of Transformation. There's Eric Neumann's um, Origins and History of Consciousness. There's my book, Maps of Meaning. I mean, I'm not stating that they're all of the same quality, by the way. That would be a bit on the presumptuous side. And I guess you could also include Joseph Campbell's book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. They're all trying to tell the same story. And that story is precisely the reclamation of the fractured and mortally wounded father. So that's God in the final analysis. Although it can also be your own father or the father within you or the father you could be from the, from the, from the abyss into which he's fallen. And then it's an ancient archetypal motif that that's required of each individual. It's an existential requirement to, for each of us to rescue 
our fallen society from the abyss into which it's eternally plunging. That requires our attention and our sovereignty and our citizenship and our ability to adopt responsibility and our willingness to work, to envision and work towards a better future, one that's better for better in the Piagetian sense, better in the integrated sense, right? Better for you, better for your family, better for the community. And to think that through carefully and to understand that that's, that the world is structured so that you're either doing that or you're wasting your potential in a manner that allows terrible things to enter the world. And for me, it was really the second realization rather than the first that was transformative. It wasn't so much that I believed that I could do good that motivated me to begin to be a conscientious person and, and dedicated to, to something. It was the realization that in the absence of that, I would be a conduit through which things that should not be allowed into the world would pour, would inevitably pour, even by mere inaction, even by merely not being who I could have been. And that after I had read the literature on totalitarian atrocity, and on general criminal psychopathology so deeply, I couldn't allow that to be something I would partake in. It, 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 it was wrong enough in my estimation. It appeared wrong enough in my estimation so that I was properly cowed into the sort of submission that might possibly make you attempt to be a decent person. And whether or not I'm a decent person seems to be subject to a substantial amount of debate, some of which I take part in myself. Um, but I would say that like there's been some effort put in that direction.